gosh, she's so fucking cute. <laughs> That's right. I put up with Microsoft to get you cat food money. <laughs> She's staying three feet away from my reach because she knows I'll try and pick her up. <laughs> yeah, we got one that does that too. He'll be like all, all excited to see you and you go to reach for him and he just steps back. <laughs> just like, I yeah. know. Fine, I'll pick your sister up. If you were in the room, you would have heard angry meowing. <laughs> How to massage your brain to make you smarter. I wish I could massage my brain sometimes. That would feel so nice. <laughs> or it would feel horrendous. I'm not sure. I wish I could do it all the time because I have really bad headaches. April yeah. was texting, asking if he could stay there tonight. I'm like, how the hell do you only know about this shit like a couple minutes ahead of time? Every time. Because he doesn't think about it. He's like, my friends are having an after party. Oh after party that's too much party for me man <laughs> he's got his homecoming dance tonight oh my parents didn't let me go jeez that sucks I kind of regret not going but it's whatever I was thinking about it the other day because we were talking about his homecoming and I was like I didn't think I had a good time at all <laughs> I held the art after party at my house and that was pretty good but the actual like prom part was garbage yeah prom hmm. wasn't great I had a great time at prom it was fun like the first hour and then it's like well maybe if we stay they'll do something interesting yeah I never did. stayed <laughs> I stayed for the whole thing we did I did lose. not but homecoming I did not have a great time because I was like at my school, they made the homecoming queen, uh, like, the candidates were the presidents of the clubs, and I was a president of, like, ten different clubs, so I had to do it for one of them. Yes. And then my cousin was in the same grade as me, so my grandma was, like, so fucking hyped, and she wanted to take us all shopping for, like, homecoming dresses, because I was going to be the homecoming queen, and I was like, no. I was very, like, no. Goth kid, like, I'm not doing this. And they made you ride on a car in a fucking parade and shit to the, like, football stadium the night of, like, homecoming game or whatever. And I was so fucking high. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I remember. <laughs> Alright. So, last week we ended. Is everybody here now? Should be. Yeah, I, I think, think so. so. Gravy, are you here? Trent. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we ended last week uh, with Gene attempting to desecrate the body oh, right. you found in the special you mean Gail. location with a special Gail did item. The body. <laughs> wrapped around its head and Gel disappeared. So we'll let when Gel, Gel tell you where uh, Gel's been. Just right before he comes back, uh, I think I just say, Alright guys, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> You're we'll giving up on him this face. time. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I immediately give up on Gel. Uh, All right. We can't just leave him. I mean, he always does this. It's like, come Damn. on. All right, so this is the moment I'm get when I come back, right? And I explain what happened. 
Yep, you are back. Okay. You poof into existence. Everybody seems very surprised. It's only been about 10 minutes that you've been gone. Okay. You and you told you him he sucks? Why would you do that? So, I get back. Um, you guys see me pop back as, as you saw before. Um, this is very reminiscent of the last time. Um, I look kind of like a, a scolded child, I guess, on my face. <laughs> like, like if you've ever gotten onto a, a child and I was, you know, kind of disappointed, like in myself type situation. And, um, do you, do you, any, does anybody react to me showing back or anything? Oh, girl, you're back. Oh. We were waiting. Yeah, mm. yeah, gravy. I knew you. I knew you would be. You would. Yeah. Be, you would stay with me. You know, Harry seems incredibly disappointed. Like. Yeah, Harry said we she should leave. She had her leave, eye on your things. But, you know. <laughs> I did no such thing. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, what had happened was, <laughs> um. I found out, you know, it's probably a bad thing to, to, to mess with this body. This body is actually, uh, I, I believe, again, I, I don't think he's ever named himself, but I believe it's Neuralis. Um, and um, he was not happy. Um, I don't know if y'all would, 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 would pick up on that, but he, he ultimately gave me two options. Um, you know, I'll just start with option B was death. Um, so... And option option A was for me. It sounds like um, now I'm I'm indebted to him. He's 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 given me the opportunity to live, but as his uh, paladin, and he's let me know that at some point, and I don't know when that point will be, he will call upon me. So um, for my life, I I owe him, and uh, we'll see how that plays out. I'm just being totally open with you guys but uh i mean i think as far as we know he's a, he's a good god so hopefully he wouldn't ask me to do anything that we wouldn't agree with in the first place that must be nice yeah um i was gonna say that uh i wonder if this water flows to the other cave and that's why it's holy quite possibly i mean um I mean, we also saw that root coming up from the other water, so I don't know if there's any other part of that root that comes out on this side. We haven't fully checked. True. But. So, um... so with that mention, like Del, you uh, you have dark vision, so you can see uh, through the edge of the cave here. None of us are going to shame our friend for desecrating a corpse. We're just uh, going to glide past that one. All right. Seems to have been <laughs> chastised. I don't know what else I could say. Don't do it again. Hit him on the nose with the newspaper. No. Nope. <laughs> right, well. Then, Gil, you can see that the water continues down like a smaller uh, stream uh, along the uh, narrowing of the cave, and that there is a, another raised small pool here mm. and that the water is blocked by another one of the gates that you saw in the beginning okay hey Harry. and now now putting up oh, go ahead i was saying now putting all this together i'm, I'm assuming just talking about i guess uh, to the group I, I think maybe i don't know what you guys think that um <laughs> noralis might be the source of the holy water what is causing this to be holy water yeah, I was going to um, ask Harry, this, this amulet, I remember it being of uh, the luminary amulet of uh, Moonbow. Do you, do you, did you read anything about that when we were studying? Did I? Did I? So, the amulet that you found, uh, roll uh, history. Okay. Maybe. 
Can she have advantage? Because I, I remembered the name of the item. No. Damn. Okay. <laughs> well, it would actually be the luminary amulet of Sahanin Moonbow, but okay. I forgot. Um, this is probably too late, but um, let me know if it is. But I can cast guidance. It's too late. Can't say I remember. Sorry. Uh, Gene, you think Harry is all educated. Sometimes you learn from the streets. Why don't you give me a chance to finger that amulet? <laughs> I'm not You've sure never like heard the wording of that. hair of the amulet. Well, I was going to study it for uh, magical markings. You want to help me? Uh, religious or otherwise? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was thinking of an arcane in nature, but religious would be helpful. Well, I'm very good at arcane. Perfect. Have a look. So give me an. I'm gonna cast guidance. On... <laughs> cast guidance on, okay. on, on him. <laughs> All right. You can ha you can take it now. Oh. <laughs> and you've never seen anything like it it's no magic you've ever been a part of should be fair Gene um, it's a little bit too complicated for you I, I think we oh. I, I could dedicate some hours to it but we don't have the time should I put it back uh you know what why don't you give it to the most powerful person in the group alright I'll keep it <laughs> I meant Harry, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> really? Okay. So Avery just texted me uh, about this after party or whatever, and when I was like, how do you just find about this stuff a couple minutes ahead of time? And he's like, well, I'm like, so where is this party? And he's like, here at my house? And I'm like, so you're asking if you can stay there and throw a party for people that are getting together for a party that don't even know if you're going to be at that house or not. Yeah, he knew. That's teenagers for you. They don't give a That's fuck. Teenagers. Well, it just makes it so that if I say no, I'm the asshole, but then I have to give up at, like one of my two days with him this week. I hate that. Um, okay. So you guys, uh, Gail, you noticed that there is a gate uh, blocking the end of the stream and uh, you can see the darkness uh, past it slightly okay. um, but that is let me see if I've reached the edges here one two three oh, shit you can see all of this Thanks. All right, so what are you guys doing? No nobody knows anything about the amulet. You've never heard of it, you've never seen it, you get no feeling off of it other than that it is a powerful magic, but nothing you understand. I'm going to suggest to the group we take an hour and kind of explore the rest of the cave, and I'll try to witch into it. Okay. okay. Um, Sounds good. With there's me. a. I mean, I don't know if you want if you want to attune. There's a little campsite I see up above us. Maybe we can go up there while you're attuning, and and the others can sure. use the camp and search around. So when you guys hmm. enter the small like kind of campsite, there is. Uh, kind of the remnants of old uh, bedding, like it was just left there, um, kind of tattered, some pieces of wood, small fire, a couple of uh, barrels that have long since rotted. There doesn't appear to be anything in any of them. And then two stone slabs um, that you 
are just kind of smoothed out stone. You have no idea what they may have been used for, but there are piles of bones in between them that at first glance appear to be animal bones. Uh, I'm going to try to light this fireplace again so I have some heat and then a tune. I'll rummage around a bit and see if there's anything to find. All right. I'll give me an investigation check if you're rummaging. Making a rummage check. Nine. Shit. Good roll so far. You have yet to find anything of any kind of value in anything other than just some uh, timber. Thorn. Some kindling. Um, I asked Carrie, do you want to take a look at these stone slabs and see what they're all about? Um, I'm a little exhausted with myself, but maybe maybe I can assist you. I can take a crack at it. Be over here. Yeah, they're the two up north, I think. Okay, yeah, sorry. B- pile of bones between them. These two stone slabs, pile of bones. I'm going to try to help Harry, but I'm not sure how much help I can do. But So what are you doing? You're looking at the markings on the stone slabs, right? Yeah, I, I guess just a general looking around, seeing what we can see about them. How? Give me an arcana check then. What's happened? Uh, I if think I'm I may need to lie down. I, yeah. I didn't hear you. What did you say? I was saying that uh, if I was assisting, would that help? But I don't think I can assist with Arcana. I don't really have to know anything about it. So, um. Yeah, so you don't really get the impression of, of what the site was used for, other than maybe it was used to be to prepare food or something because there's, you know, a pile of animal bones in between. In general, what do we see when we look at them? How, what do they look like? Can you describe them? In any, in when any you way? look at them, what you see yeah. are two like very flat, uh, almost like kind of raised shelves, like maybe six inches off the ground, but just stone slabs that are just kind of square, rectangle, well, rectangular. And that's it. You don't see very many markings on them, just maybe some scratches. Nothing super obvious. It's just been ground down stone. Almost like they're small tables. How high are they off the ground? About six inches off the ground. Six inches. Okay. And both of them are about five feet across. Mm-hmm. And about six feet uh, long. Are there when any stains at... on them? All that you kind of see on them is just some dust from everything having sat there for so long. There's some leaves and dust on them, a little bit of dirt. When we look at the bones uh, between them, is there any type of... Does it look like they were burned or anything or just... They definitely don't appear to be burned. They're just white animal bones. Um, you assume they're animal bones as there are some like horns and smaller like uh, leg pieces and things like that in there that would be typically too small to be human. But Very similar There's... to the pile of bones you found in the corner of the yeah. southern part of the cave. I'm just going to sit for a minute. I must still be confused. 
if I walk over here, do I see anything more, or is this kind of a dead end over here? Nope. All you see is the gate over there. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the gate that mm -hmm. blocks the entryway between the building mm -hmm. and the entrance of the cave. And the water pools there mm -hmm. and kind of travels down around the edge of the building, past the uh, channel lock that you raised into the large pool where you found the body. What are you doing, Gravy? Oh, you know, thinking. Um, just in case I missed it. No, we've already checked the southern room. Uh, the gate down below? No, we we haven't. We uh, just kind of came up here to let Jean attune for a second. So, yeah, go for it. So, Gravy, you're going to go explore on your own down there? <laughs> yeah, uh, if there is a desk, obviously the maps can be different. But, yeah, I just wanted to see if there's, like, wares to peruse or books or papers or, you know, hints of people being in here or something so when you get down to that part you do find what appears to be a chamber mm -hmm. um there is kind of a residual in the narrowing of the cave uh a frame of maybe what had been a door frame where it had been blocked off at one point but in the chamber there's a couple of you know tattered bookshelves covered in dust there's nothing on either of the shelves here and here there's uh, a bedroll that is also rotting and covered with leaves and dust. And there is a desk and chair with the drawers open, almost as it's, if it's been ransacked, and a couple of uh, torn pieces of paper on the desk. You find okay. on one of the pieces of paper what appears to be a map. Okay. Is it of um, the forest, the country, the city? So when you examine the map, you find that it has a kind of outline of what you can recognize from seeing the map uh, to Leafly Village. Okay. And it has the two caves labeled on it, Milford Cave and Silver Cave. Okay. All right, well, I guess I'll just... Uh... Look for any sort of writings or some sort of like hidden illusion in case the it's like thing, magically enchanted. Well, the one thing that you do notice about the cave or about the uh, map is that Milvper Cave and Slivper Sliv Cave are joined by what looks like a river or a stream that looks oddly similar to the one inside this cave that you're looking at. Okay, so there is like an aquifer that connects them. You could safely guess that, yeah. E, um, I mean, I would definitely further ransack the room, but if that's kind of like the thing of note, I wouldn't mind bringing that back to the party and be like, Excitedly tell them the geography of the land. Uh, if there's any checks or anything you'd like me to do here, but no stress. There's no checks really needed because everything's obviously like pretty empty from what you see. Okay, cool. I guess I'll just check the other corner in case I missed anything. There's absolutely nothing there. Sounds good. I will reconvene and see if they have any info. Um, we didn't really find anything. Uh, hi, Gravy. Uh, we, we found nothing in this area except for these two stone uh, items. We looked at them, and they're beyond us. Um, how have you done? Just show them the map. Uh, I probably didn't overhear anybody talk about the connection, but uh, just mention that 
I think that there's some sort of connection between this cave and the other cave, not like through Neuralis, but through like geography. It's interesting. Leads into what I was thinking as well, but kind of I think it proves the point out. Do we have any idea or any thoughts of why these these gates would be placed and blocking blocking the flow of the water? Does does anything is are, are the gates indicated on the map that you found? Um, here, take a look because all I could really tell is that there's some sort of underground aquifer connecting the place. But you might be onto something. Maybe someone closed the slough ice and. That's why people are getting poisoned? Maybe, like, they could have always been poisoned or something? Maybe. Or maybe the land was fed maybe, by the aquifers? I mean, we don't know what the well, right? The well in the town was connected with. We did try to purify it the best we could, but it could be that this was all connected and they got con contaminated that way. Mm. Um, maybe. Did we ever investigate the water or look at the water at all to make sure it was... Okay, like the water above previously, like before we let it go down into what where Nor Noralis was down there. No, I think we just I thought I thought it was moved like the dark game. or sludgy or something. Did did you explain what the water looked like previously, Cricket? When we crossed over here? I did. Uh but the water was just very um kind of uh like clear mosquito blue. trap. Oh. It was it was clear blue in appearance and and moving, but when you mm. got closer to where the body was, it was really murky, mm. like a mm. cloud, and you couldn't see uh, too far into it. You could see, you know, the twelve inches to where the body was to be able to see the hole in the tomb, but beyond that, any deeper, and it started to get murky. I'm gonna put just like a quick map i didn't make one for the map that you found because it's very remedial uh but this is kind of what you can imagine from harry and gravy and gene's time in the other cave y'all took, took a whole beach party does this water look uh similar to the water that was over there like in in the other case, I mean, it, it looks like water to me. I don't know. Neuralis any... water didn't necessarily look uh, special or anything. It just kind of, just I don't know. Just what? Yeah. It was just fresh water, I guess. Yeah. We don't really have a way to test it or anything, but I would assume. It's holy. Uh, well, I mean, if someone could detect goodness, maybe, but uh, I can't do that. And yeah, no. You know, maybe poison and disease. I mean, I can. Let me see. Harry can do the not, poison check, but that's not going to tell gonna, you, you know, whether it's good or bad. I'm going to stand over here. I don't know if this is going to have any effect, but we'll give it a whirl. Um, divine sense. So it detects any strong evil registered senses, um, odor, powerful, good, rings, heavenly music. 60 feet, Celestial Fiend, Undead. So when you cast Divine Sense uh, in that location, you don't get any sense of evil, just a very strong uh, Celestial Energy. Mm -hmm. okay. And that's coming off of the tomb where the okay. body is. So I portray that to, to everyone. Uh, I'm getting a sense of Celestial which I think just lines up with what we were all thinking. Um, but the good news is I don't sense anything evil. Mm. That's good. 
Oh, Gene, it's been about an hour. You should be attuned to the amulet. Nice. How do I feel? Do you feel like uh, the amulet that you carry is an immense... Um, <clears throat> An immense magical energy that you may not be able to sustain having on your person for very long but that it is a healing energy of great religious import mm. yeah that's exactly what we needed true mm. i wonder if we can cure the priest finally <laughs> uh oh i'm gonna roll some hit dice as well because Is dead. Sure. So it's about 7 p.m. where you guys are now. Mm -hmm. Um, I looked at my clock on my f computer. I'm like, <laughs> are actually, you, it's are you, going to <laughs> are you going to explore the rest of the cave? Yes. Like Cherry kind of stands up now that you've attuned to it. She's had a little bit of a rest, and ask. Uh, well, should we try to get back? Should we keep exploring the cave for, further? What should we... What do you recommend that we do? Where's it takes to get here? This place makes me uneasy. Like two hours. We could get back easy. Um, we should reset yeah. the gates to where they were yeah. in case the water yeah. flow was important. And then we should just... I mean, the cave doesn't seem that much bigger. Let's just look around really quick. See if we find anything. Yeah. Sure. If if I walk down here, do I see anything, anything more? Uh, when you walk down there, you see um, just kind of the corners of the cave, but you also see a very large gate mm -hmm. that blocks off the end of the cave. Okay. Does it have its own control mechanism like this one up here? It does not cover the water. So it goes across the surface, mm -hmm. but it is primarily blocking off any travel. So wall to wall, ceiling to ground in the cave, but it is not a channel lock. It's not stopping the water. What I mean is, can we raise it from this side to get through? No, you don't see any kind of mechanisms on it for it to move. Okay. And the other... Uh... This one right here, are there any mm -hmm. mechanisms on it that I can see? It has the same mechanisms that you saw on the other, which was a series of gears and a lever mm -hmm. on the front. Let me ping here. And it's currently down blocking the flow of water or up allowing the flow of water? It's up allowing the flow of water. Uh, I'm going to come over to this one and crank it all the way open just to see what happens. So when you uh, pull the lever on, uh, lever, lever, lever. on that side, um, it raises and the water comes rushing out, uh, initially flooding the sides of the bank here mm -hmm. around the house. And then catching up, flowing here, it raises on the sides, recovering the tomb and kind of spreading slowly outwards along the sides here. But it raises the water level of the stream here about a foot, completely covering this pool and then this pool before it rushes here and then hits the gate and begins to expand on the sides. So the water's still flowing under the large gate, but it's basically more water than, it's just overflow because it's a small hole with a lot of water coming at it, basically. Right, the water, yeah. there was enough uh, channeled room in the kind of creek for it to rise about a foot before it mm -hmm. started uh, swelling over the banks on the side. The sheer amount of water that's pouring down um, from the channel locks at the top where Gene is comes out so fast that it's naturally going to expand onto the riverbanks before the water can catch up and fill the creek bed. 
it wants to flow downstream though so there's a lot of room all of the kind of like lighter gray area that you see is the floor of the cave mm -hmm. and the stones are obviously the walls of the cave the the ground in the cave as we walk through here does it look like it would be the ground that would be underwater basically yeah cricket said it was a typically. riverbed yeah okay it's like a dry riverbed it's like uncommonly flat and dusty dull in some places and hard uh, up against the walls this entire cave could be flooded pretty quickly in a matter of hours so the water has risen where gene is mm -hmm. over a foot in depth already so all the water is flowing downstream about a foot higher than it was before no it's not flowing at a consistent rate the water around oh, you see, is it's flowing so quickly that it can't flow down the stream fast enough so it's washing along the sides mm -hmm. more it's not moving as quickly and as fast down here where gel is yet right am i am i in like the lowest level of it uh like depth wise right now is that uphill to get back to gene basically or is yes. it pretty level this whole place it's fair it's it's not a massive altitude change mm -hmm. i would say maybe it's like an incline of maybe like eight feet or so okay but it is definitely flowing downstream downhill from gene okay it's just coming out so fast where gene is that it's going everywhere until it can find a direction to flow downstream the area where the tomb is is um pretty wide open so a lot of the water can can flow and fill that area up before it it overwhelms it to make much of a difference where you are gil we do yeah i mean i don't i don't know if we have any idea what we're doing right now <laughs> if like what what our goal would be with moving this water at, the, at this well, point well someone but, put uh, this barrier here yeah yeah no I, I agree with what you guys are doing let's 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 just... let the water flow and then the people can get right. healthier sources of water yeah i don't think there's anything wrong with i mean someone put a mechanism here it's not like it's going to flood the whole chamber or else the right. mechanism would be underwater so i think we yeah. just leave it open and and dip or we could follow the water i guess we could try i no, we can't get past this wall so i don't know i guess we just leave okay and there's nothing to do this last wall here you said there's no is there any anything on the wall like handles doorknobs in nothing or is it just like it's a solid barrier basically you can roll investigation and get a closer look at it all right <laughs> let me see can you give yourself guidance? I don't... Yes. You can? I'm going to give myself guidance because I'm sure hell's going to need it. Um, you said investigation, yes? Yes. At disadvantage, plus, that's 8 plus whatever I get on guidance. It can be a 1d4. Oh, okay, a 12. So from what you see on the gate, it seems incredibly um, thick and... There don't seem to be any moving parts on it at all. There don't seem to be any releases, locks, anything of that sort. It's almost like it's just a massive wall. But you can't see quite to the top because it's dark and uh, you rolled like shit. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. Um, so it's starting to flood down here, right? So Harry, hi. Yeah, it's starting to flood down there very like you'd have to be watching to see any change in it. Need my help? Yes. Tell me cool. what to do. Um, looking at this wall over here, and I didn't find too much about it, but just trying to understand its importance. It seems to be letting water flow through. I don't know if there's any way to control it or. Um, operate it in any kind of way or uh, this or this one. wall yeah, okay. looking at this one I inspect the wall guidance Neural investigation it's <laughs> 22 
Thank you. Oh, shoot. And guidance. <laughs> and guidance. How much is guidance? 1d4. 1d4. I'm taking it. You never know. <laughs> Four. 26. In your experience, Harry, this appears to just be a very um, impenetrable gate. This was not meant to move. You check the dirt below it. It is moving under the stream, but the sides are piled with leaves and rocks as if it's not been moved, maybe ever. And you can see all the way to the top with your superior eyesight. <laughs> is it a dam? And it is uh, more like a dam, yes. Hmm. And then Cherry's here, and she's like, uh, I really feel like we should get out of here. I'm not feeling great about being in this place. I think we've kind of searched the cave. You know, we found this amulet that we could use to help heal people. It doesn't matter. It seems like if we, you know, raise or lower these gates for the water, we're not getting that gate down anytime soon. There's nothing that we could do tonight for that. Agreed. I would like to return yep. to town. Let's do that. I get on this raft and I start boogie boarding back up the hill. <laughs> Can we go out that way, they will? You have to go back through the mushroom yeah. town. So I'm wondering if we've left Careful these gates open, anything. right? It, is the assumption that if we leave this place and leave the gates open, when we come back, if we come back, this whole place will be flooded, right? Potentially. Is that but that would be our belief, right? I didn't yeah, think, maybe. I didn't think like it would be overflowing out of the cave. I think it might fill up the riverbed, but I don't think it'll go much higher. Because this, I mean, this building is here, right? Which probably postdates the gates. But with this mechanism being here, they had to get there somehow to install the gate. Right, so, so you think if we deep. needed to, we could get back and change the gate levels? Right. Okay. Onward. Cherry's kind of leading the group at the front out. She's in a, a hurry to get out of this place. Is Cherry really strong? Yes. Did you give me a piggyback ride? I'm tired. <laughs> She kneels down, like, kind of grimacing. Like, get on. Thanks. I didn't think she's literally me. just, like, <laughs> got your legs wrapped around her hips, but your feet are still, like, dragging on the ground. Yeah. She's, like, really struggling to carry you. <laughs> Dibs on the next ride. And then she gets outside the cave and just kind of dumps you off. In the cart, I guess. Yeah. Nice. Hopefully not on the ground. <laughs> Where's the goddamn cart? Feel like Cherry's the one saying that? Just <laughs> groaning under this full grown half orc? I'm so lost on these maps. Holy shit. <laughs> so our goal right now, guys, is what? To get back to the local settlement and before okay. night? The Leafly yeah. or yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to see if Leafly has a well. I assume they do, and kind of check out the maybe see the water's okay. getting there or not. Yeah. So when you guys um, hit the road and like pick up the wagon to kind of head towards Leafly, you come to um, the turnoff from the cave in the main road. Um, and lo and behold, as you approach the crossroads, you run into one Giancarlo. Wait, what? <laughs> the fucking looks butler? Very surprised to see you all on the road at this time of evening. Was he heading to the cave? Or he's, just too leafly? He's just in the very middle of the road walking. He's clearly coming from the north. So you don't know if he was heading towards the cave or to the village of Leafly. Okay, but he I kind of waves at Cherry and waves at the rest of you, and he looks very shifty. No, thank mm -hmm. you. How far is he from me, Cricket? 
<laughs> I would say I, I probably should have prepared a map for this. Jeez. No, it's okay. You just gotta tell me how far it is. It's about 20 feet from you. <laughs> she I... was in shooting range? Whoops. Is what he's asking? <laughs> he's about 20 feet from you. He recognizes Cherry and the rest of the party. This little sniveling kind of face nods. Fancy to meet you all here. Shouldn't you be busy somewhere saving someone? You stupid sniveling fuck. I cast a vicious mockery on him and I run up to him. I run up five feet from this stupid fucker. Here, we'll just also, use... also, you don't have to do damage to him. I just want him to feel magically insulted as well. Use this. No, that's the wrong map. Just bring us onto a white board. We don't really need the surroundings. So. It's. Yeah, I don't need the surroundings to know how I feel about John Carlo. <laughs> Oh, look! Familiar, huh? Remember when coming I... Out, you're coming out of the cave here, and then yeah. pretend like... Uh, oh, this is John Carlo. Okay. Pretend like this is the road south, right? Yeah. And John Carlo is coming from here. He's in the middle, he's, right? He's right about here. Okay. All right. Uh, you have an old John Carlo from when he got the shit kicked out of him. He's created a mirage of himself. <laughs> yeah. I say it. Fuck, what was the fucking thing I remembered about him? God damn it. Feather in my cap and my ass. So, Giancarlo, like, when you get close to him, he takes a scarf out of his pocket and just kind of waves it in your face. Like, he can't see you. What? He's like, what is this, what is this creature want with me? Oh my fucking god. Harry is insulted by this lack of decorum <laughs> by the enemy. It's like, I say there is no need for disability. Uncivility. Disability. This transient accosted me on the road, screaming like a heathen. Gets right up into my face, breathing his bird breath all about Thank my you. person. Let us just I merely am holding a, a step neck in between back. his air and my air. Don Carlo, you University of Neuralis, snobby headed, stupid doofus. Steady on his, his eyes get so big when you say that and he takes a step back. He yeah. Comes into me. Yeah. You think uh you think we don't know anything about you, huh? What Take is Take a it step that you closer. Think you know? I, I think that you know something, and Gene's gonna get it out of you. <laughs> but I'm gonna hold his hips, not John very Carlo tightly. Looks, John Carlo like looks like shirking his shoulders forward and like looks over his shoulder at Gene behind him, like, "What is the meaning of this?" I have a rope pulled from my backpack. We're gonna get real kinky, John Carlo. <laughs> I hope you were into it. If not, sucks to it's be a you. little glint. He has a little glint in his eye <laughs> as he looks back at Gravy. He's like, well, explain oh, yourselves no. or I'll have to be informing my good lord that you have been rude to his servant. And we both know how he feels about that. Oh, you mean the lord? You abandoned? Huh? Tell him, Gene. Abandoned? The lord sent me to take his daughter and son-in-law to town. They weren't in town. Inside check. Inside check. B Bardic inspiration on Gene too. <laughs> Guidance. <laughs> you gotta touch one of us. Get close. Touch me. Touch one of us. Who, who's who's doing it? I don't know who's doing. I, I want to check crazy. him, but right, Gene I'm, will have that. Gene will have the extra. Okay, if boot. we do it to Gene, because you can give him Bardic inspiration. Yeah. We'll just back him up. All right. <gasps> Be prepared for lu uh, lucky. I want to give him lucky. Get a reroll. 
Give me luck? Oh, I didn't know we could do that. Okay, 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 okay. We were before. I don't know if we. Lucky you can. No, I just. This guys. unseen servant. <laughs> about. I'm gonna run natural twenty on this dumbass. Woo! Not twenty, baby. Yeah. You can tell from Giancarlo's kind of uh, bravado that uh, he's not telling you a lie. He he was told by the Lord to take his daughter and son-in-law uh, to town, but the town he refers to. Is the capital? No, they they weren't in town, where we were. And, I think uh, he, he's saying that Giancarlo left with them. Yeah, they. Yeah, they Giancarlo left. took them from the Lord's Manor to the capital before I mean, all of this went down. Tell us this. How, how long does it? How long has it been? And how long would it have taken him to go to the capital and get back? Is it feasible that he could have made it back to this point from the time that we know he left? Basically. It's been about three days. Four, yeah, it's like four so, days ish there and back. And he's walking in his fast pace or his slow pace? That's a good question. <laughs> How long in the <laughs> <Giancarlo> Carlo Miles? <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't walking at all. He saw him. So we don't know. Cricket, and don't act like you don't know why we hate this guy, okay? Huh? All right? I don't want anybody playing me again. Except for the game at D&D. Playing. Do y'all want to question him about the letter we found on my way? Yell. So it up. doesn't take it doesn't take three or four days to get to the capital. It only takes about a full day. So yeah. it's feasible that he. It would takes be about twenty four hours okay. of so nonstop travel to get his there. Ace. And that's Correct. walking or riding a horse or something like that. That's walking. Because we see him walking, right? He's not on a horse or what? He, he, does he have a horse with him? He's, he doesn't he have a horse with him. Okay. Walking. All right, John Carlo, are you headed back to Holfstead? <laughs> what the fuck is that called? Hulf... Hartfelt. Hartfelt? Yes, I am. What we is it, any of your business? Oh, oh, oh <laughs> this son of Maybe a bitch! Maybe we should bad cop him. We were we were told that you were you were sent to get aid. Where, where's the aid? Were you able to find aid? Aid for whom? The town. I don't have to disclose any of my business to any of you ruffians. Now, let no, me be on my did. way. Oh my god. You have cost Harry, me and held me up long enough. Harry gonna... puts a hand on Gravy's shoulder like, calm down, steady on. I've got this. And he looks over at uh, Giancarlo. It's like, I apologize for all this, Giancarlo. It has been a wild time since you have been gone. And I have terrible news that you should probably know as the mayor's loyal servant. He he actually looks very interested. Like he understands your language here, Harry. What is it? I'm afraid that Mayor Shoth has fallen ill. Because oh, of yes. you. We feared this. Because of you. Ha. Huh. Gravy. Steady on. All right, I'm about. I'm a walk away. I'm gonna fist the wall. Thankfully, I wasn't taken ill. The mayor sent me. To escort his family to safety, as he knew he would likely come down with it. Why we were just you? terribly concerned. The mayor didn't mention this. Because I'm the only person that knew where his family was. He kind of blurts out. And then he where? looks like, oh, like, maybe he shouldn't and, have. And where were they? <laughs> I mean, I'm at the wall. I'm fisting a wall. <laughs> Again, that is n none of your business. And I will be on my way now. I don't have much time to get home if the mayor is sick. We Why would he do send you? We can to figure out a way. Why would he send you and not someone more com competent in combat? We've seen you. Get Especially with the wrecked. dangers in this area. Yeah. I don't he have to answer any of your questions. One I should be like, terribly <laughs> worried, John like, Carlo. He's like very like fruitlessly like like kind of scuffling against you like Jean you're just kind of like holding him by the she's forehead so and he's like 
I, I, even if I miss him, I don't give a fuck. I shoot the ground or I shoot his goddamn, like, shoulder, like, arm or something with a crossbow. <laughs> you, you, you land it and you hit him right in the shoulder and he, like, falls down screaming, like, he's dying. Oh, oh, we should believe that you would fend off demons and zombies. And he says, you'll pay for this. I can't believe you've done this. Oh, shut up. I can heal you. And then he passes out. Brady, no. I do believe oh. diplomacy broke down. I pulled the crossbow bolt out. I don't heal him yet. <laughs> He's fainted from the pain. He's not... Okay, I, I check his pulse and if he's de dead or not. <laughs> he's he's alive. He's just fainted okay. from the pain. He's gone all white. <sighs> Why would only he know where the mayor's daughter was? Well, is the mayor... Potentially a confidant of the mayor, mayor, yeah, because he works with him all the time, but... That is true. The mayor did trust him. I mean, it seemed that the mayor trusted him, but... The mayor also gave him a tiny fucking room with nothing in it. <laughs> Well, he might have requested that room. We didn't, um... Sure. Looked like a broom was... closet to me. Oh, yeah. Gail, I, I suppose we just blame all the poor people for being poor, too, huh? What about... So Cherry, Cherry uh, kind of, like, runs over to Giancarlo and, like, holds him up and, like, she's like, we've got to get him back to town. I, I just can't believe that this is the only reaction that you could think of. She was like, this was a mistake. And she picks him up and she's, uh, she starts walking him back. Like she's going to carry him the whole way. Yeah, that's right, Cherry. Carry him. You know, you do catch more flies with honey. So, so they're headed, they're headed back to the, uh, Hartville, yeah? Cherry and... Yeah, they're, they're, um... They're headed back to Heartfelt, but wait, Cherry's like marching with Giancarlo hoisted over her shoulder. Between Perhaps we'll go... it would be faster to head to Leafly. Yes, let's go to Leafly or Heartfelt or wherever Cherry's going. You don't want to going. get caught in the night with an injured man. Also, put him in the cart. Cherry kind of stomps off a little bit more and then realizes that you make more sense, but she's clearly lost her temper. She throws Giancarlo in the cart. What I remember. The, the oh, gently Cherry. now, Cherry. Cherry. Cherry did not like this guy in the first place, but I'm guessing our overwhelming actions have kind of outweighed <laughs> went overboard. But yeah, yeah. gentler, Cherry. Cherry. Come on. Yeah. Well, between John Carlo and the mayor, they were the, like the only two people who knew we were coming out to this map to get ambushed. Yeah. So thumbs up, still. Thumbs up. Well, we we haven't we, we we need to question him about the letter, and we we definitely got to get some more information out of him. He 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 received a, a letter. There was a letter saying, "On my way." We it looked like he had written, maybe in sending to the capital. So. You guys want to head back to the village of Leafly with John Carlo? What's the closest village? It is Leafly, right? Leafly, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely dusk. Okay, are. so we'll go back to Leafly so that John Carlo can rest and wake up, and then we should probably escort him back to Hartfield. Yeah. So this is escalated <laughs> from character deaths and rebirth to kidnapping. You've been you know right, at least. You know what, Harry? I'm not very impressed with you either right now, okay? That was above the table, but I'm sure you're still not happy with me. <laughs> All right, when you guys get back to uh, the village of Leafly. On the way here, he apologizes to Gravy on. and tries to explain <laughs> that he was trying to get more information out of him, but he completely understands why you would hate this guy. Ugh. In an attempt to placate him. Listen, y'all, that was my bad, okay? You saw me fisting that wall. Tempers were high. I've never seen you fist anything. Thank you. So I hope it stays that way. In his dreams. <laughs> Everybody else is dreaming of fucking goat-headed bards and 
Gravy and Derek are <laughs> pleasure <laughs> palace. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. I was Sleep telling walk. somebody about Sleep that. Sleep fisting the wall. Of the yeah. <laughs> Gravy's just like unintentionally horny. All right, so you guys end up back in the village of Leafly. I assume that you go to visit Rita. Yeah. Yeah, she'd be the she's the only adult that we've seen in this area. So she seems really surprised when you knock on the door um after peeking through. She says, I ought have known it was you. You all make so much noise. Only a large party such as yours could be outside my door. Well, I must say I'm surprised to see you back. What did you find? She welcomes you guys in to the house to sit by the fire. Uh, well, Rita, uh, if you happen to know any environmental technicians, that would be great. Otherwise, uh, we had another encounter with some interesting creatures, but overall, kind of creatures. we are safe. Truth be told, some monsters and some godly. Godly, she says, and like sits down in her chair, like astonished. And First what of happened all, to you? She looks at uh, Gel because you look so different now. All the light and the <laughs> and the the troubles of my ways, and and I've been um, changed now by um, she she's Elvin, right? Yes. Okay. By by um the the who I believe the God Narals has he's ang I angered him, but he's given me another another chance and he's uh, changed my life. You don't say. She kind of like titters into her hands. Well, we'll always welcome a holy man around here. Now tell me what you found. What is that in the wagon? Oh yeah. Uh, do you have any uh? Wound packing materials, uh, I've injured a friend. I say with gritted teeth. <laughs> well, I guess get them on the table out here. And if you could throw some Vicks so you could wake them up. <laughs> she starts, uh, helping to, uh, Dress his wound on the table while Cherry assists her. Uh, I just and tell the rest Rita of you, how do you fare? Short story, or before they all go, I just tell her as short as possible, like the cave, the cave, and encountering our friend, and probably having to go back to Heartfelt. Will you be wanting to stay the night here, or are you heading straight on? If you would allow us, please let us stay here, please. Yes, I think I could accommodate you for one more evening. I must say I was a little nervous to spend another night alone oh, with young Henry. Thing... I was going to ask, how have things, Rita, how, how have things been since we've gone? Has everything been okay for you guys? Uh... Everything's been quiet, unnormally quiet, but it's the nighttime that I worried about. That's when Henry always seems to find a calling to leave the house. I just wondered what would happen tonight. I decided to stay up the entire evening and I drank oh, so many cups of tea. I'm feeling a little bit wired. <laughs> hey, so she packs John Carlo all up and uh, he kind of rouses from being passed out he's like shaken up when he sees Cherry above him and the uh, the older woman he's like what have you done you shot me he's like glaring at gravy you wish. 
Uh, go ahead, Gene. Uh, I'll just say to Giancarlo, well, we just healed you, so you should chill out a bit. I'm actually going to step outside and get some first. <laughs> Is somebody actually going to heal him, though? <laughs> no. No? He's alive. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Uh, I asked where you're... If he gets long rest. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Short rest. Uh, I should read of the necklace and say if she's ever heard legend of anything like this. Um, just as, uh, Gravy turns to, uh, walk out the house, um, Giancarlo, like, sits up and gets a good look at, um, what Gravy's carrying on his back, and he kind of exclaims, what are you doing with that? Uh, and points to the sword on, that Gravy's carrying, like, oh. interrupting everyone. The sword of Neralis, you mean? Yeah, he gifted this to me. Yeah, I'm friends that with the gods. That can't be. That can't be, he says. Oh, it be. Thieves, the lot of you. I hope you get everything that you deserve. I... It fucking hates <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't. I don't think he smokes, but I think he bubs the smoke from someone. And, like, <laughs> stands where that fucking goat man was like, <laughs> While you're over there, you might want to use a light, just in case you see any shadows, Gravy. And uh, uh, Rita reaches yeah. out like she's going to touch the amulet, Jean, and yet she doesn't pick it up. She kind of retracts her hand a little bit when she gets close to it. Um, she can feel the immense power coming off of it. Can you two quit kissing? <laughs> These two dogs are kissing and then fighting. I was, I was fighting. talking to me and Giancarlo. <laughs> uh, and she's like, it's very beautiful. And I can tell how much power it carries. Where did you find this? In a tomb. A tomb? She says, looking up at you. Yeah, Whose tomb? Not 100% sure, uh, but it was uh, Milk Cave's actually a tomb. Oh, that would explain why we were never allowed to go down into it. You wouldn't have gone very far. It was far. reserved for the holy folk in our... Indeed. In our village. It was all very clandestine and secretive. Unfortunately, my parents died before I ever got to ask much information or acceded to their place. But there's such treasures that exist there. She reaches out like she wants to touch it again, but then she doesn't. Um, Rita, these holy folks that you talk of, I'm, I'm assuming they're gone now. They're no longer in, in the village. But if if not, if they are here, I'd like to speak to them. If if they have gone, did they perhaps leave anything behind? Any uh, writings, any books, any information about that we could study? Well, considering that everyone in the village is dead, they're not here. Right, but did they leave anything behind? They used to live here, right? So, oh. the only thing I could think of is um, Sophia's Sophia's father kept a pretty good library of texts. He may have something that could inform you. Unfortunately, they kept everything so secretive that not many still practiced, and the ones that did certainly didn't share anything with the rest of us. Wait, Jesus! My wow. cat just oh. jumped on top of my hair, <laughs> like, above my head, and it scared me. I'm sorry. I thought you solved something. <laughs> I, I'm Eureka! Gonna Eureka! I'm going to suggest that maybe Harry and... I was going to uh, say, doesn't and, Sophia hate us? Um, yeah, well, she hates gravy, right? She hates gravy. Um, but... Um, maybe y'all want to try to look and see if y'all can research anything about the things we found there. Maybe there's some manuscripts or anything that would tell you more. I don't know. Everybody hates green. <laughs> Rita, where do you get your water from? 
Oh, there's a, uh, there's a stream just past the cropping of houses here over to the west. I'm gonna go check we it out. We just have a pump, a pump sit up here. Thank you. Um, it's a little late. I can't be waking Sophia up this late. She puts the children to bed much earlier than this. But I'm I'm sure I could ask her in the morning if she's willing to give you access to anything. She wasn't too happy with you when you left here yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to be honest, um, I, I, you know, I'm not feeling well. Um, and our friend Gravy, he's... He's a little bit hit or miss. Some days he's really happy. Some days he's really <laughs> upset. We just, you know, we're just trying to get used to him ourselves. But uh, I fucking hate him. <laughs> I think I think he's been stressed, honestly. He, I he's mean, taking, he's taken to smoking recently, and <laughs> you know, filthy. The nicotine's not either. doing well for him. Filthy, filthy habit. But I mean, are you sure about him? Oh he really my! He really seems to have yeah. very little control about himself, and he did shoot his friend here. That was a high stress scenario. Yeah. So what you're saying is, is he's very stressed and doesn't handle it well. Yes. <laughs> and shots. <laughs> I hate all of you so much. Yeah. Lost <laughs> range with a crossbow here, and you'd like I... him to stay the night in my home. Well, we'll we we we'll definitely keep an eye on. But to be fair, once you get to know him, he's um. He's a shit, but I mean, he's a good shit. He's a shit that grows on you, and um, <laughs> he's uh, he's he's been through a lot, right? And uh, so we we've you know we understand a little bit more. And I, I don't want to uh, say too much about his personal life, but he he deservingly should be stressed, I believe. Well, I've heard that stress causes a lot of reactions in the body, so. It's not unfounded, but I, uh, I can tell he has serious teeth problems. Yeah. She kind of, like, nudges you with her elbow. <laughs> She's implying you have rancid fucking breath. <laughs> I probably should, yeah. <laughs> Someone else has recently pointed um, out to you. Rita, can you point me to Henry's room? Um, uh, well, of course. So uh, she takes you back to the the rear of the the small wooden house. There's only one room in it. Um, the rest of it is open. Okay. So it's just a very small, like five foot by maybe six foot place for a bedroll and a door. Okay, I uh, I'm gonna cast alarm on the room. So if anything enters or exits the room, I know about it. It's like a ping in your mind. And Rita says, well, you know, we've got your friend patched up here and it is getting awfully late. I anticipate possibly another long evening, so I'd like to get as much rest as I can. I'm sure one of you strapping heroes will be happy to watch over us. Of course. Uh, can we sleep in the abandoned house across the road again? Yes, you may. Thank you. On John she Carlos. kind of locks the door <laughs> behind you. Buddy, pal. I put my arm around John Color and I just kind of walk with him like to the sleeping quarters. I don't. I don't want to take my eye off of him. So. Um, I don't know, guys. If like. I'm going to need to try to sleep again tonight. Um, do we trust Giancarlo in the night? How are we going to handle him? I'm sure Gravy trusts him, but I mean, maybe we the rest. Keep watching, just kind of keep, yeah, an, just eye keep an eye on him while somebody, whoever's on watch. 
Yeah, that seems reasonable. In this in this place we're going to sleep, is, if I go in here and look, is there any... You, I think you said before, there's no windows, no exits. They're just the door to the porch. And There's just one door to the porch. Yeah, so if front. he's inside, we can assume he's... Yeah. Well, I mean, unless he breaks down the wall or something like that, but... Um, climbs through a window. Finds it. Probably is up in a floorboard or something. I don't know. But all right. So, he's so Cherry in there. follows Giancarlo yeah. inside and says, um, you know, it's been a very long day. And again, I think Reed is right. We're probably going to have a long night. So I'm going to try to get as much sleep as well. Mm -hmm. Who's who's keeping watch? I'll take first shift. Thank you, Jean. Okay. She like winks Second. at you. I'm going to try to sleep again. Um, Gravy, I didn't know if you wanted to try to attune to that sword or not, but, um, you're welcome to try. Um, and, um, I'm going to try to sleep. If y'all need me, you know. I might I'm suggest, although it might be a terrible idea, that you sleep with the sword again tonight, Gil. Since uh -huh. Neuralis has given you his blessing, maybe you'll be good. Mm. Um... Or you could I'd do it definitely agree with that. <laughs> I mean, I, I, yeah, I'd, I'd, Wait, I think I'd try we... it without it. I mean, I don't know. Because I mean, I've tried it? three nights with it, and it didn't go well. Yeah. I was going to say, we haven't seen the control group of like him not sleeping with it yet. Right. So yeah. yeah, we can always try another night. Or maybe Neuralis just gets more mad at him. True. I mean, I, I don't know if you can do anything with that, that necklace you found that, that might have healing properties. I don't know. I, you don't know how to use it, but... Maybe you can hold it against my head and go woola walla or something. <laughs> I don't know. That seems but, uh, like a bad, walla. bad idea. <laughs> okay. A bad idea. Uh, before I go to bed, though, I'm going to cast my Ouch. divine thing. This one. Which basically gives me one spell slot that it uses. I can use it once per long rest. So it's gone. Let's take a five minute break. Dog's out. Use the bathroom. That's sounds good. Yeah. So. Alright. Five minutes.
and back. Yep. I don't know if it's worth doing, but uh, before I go to sleep, if y'all want, I can cast Divine Sense, and if there is a, if he's in the area, that that guy, I should be able to know. Hmm. He's back. But I think we'll find out soon asleep. But yeah, that's true. And uh yeah. I'm back. Um cricket just FYI, my character now, I don't know if it's gonna make any difference. But just for your information, I have divine health, um, which makes me immune to disease. Okay. Thank you. Can I spoon with John Carlo? Can you what? Spoon with him. I don't think he'd allow that. <laughs> I wish we had a little bell or something to put on him. <laughs> he moved a bell? Yeah, so if he like moved around or got up. Ding, 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 ding. God damn it. These dogs drive me crazy. I'm still wearing his white gloves. Don't you think he realizes that? <laughs> it probably pisses him off. <laughs> Manhandling him with his own gloves on. <laughs> I think I'm going to sleep next to the door. That way, if anybody comes through, I'll maybe be woken if I if I do fall asleep even. All right, Jean, are you here? Yep. Are you back, Trent? All right. Uh... Is everybody going to sleep then? I'm on Should the first be. watch, and then I'll wake up gravy, I guess. Yeah. All right, your watch goes smoothly. You can swap with gravy. I sure am. Petting my sword. Gravy, are you watching from inside the house or outside? Um, uh, honestly, I'm so fucking <laughs> tired of John Carlo that he's like on the stool outside, kind of where like the barn doors propped open, like there's like a crack. So I think he's like has enough sight to see like Gal sleeping off to the side. But yeah, he's like sitting outside, just kind of like. What do I have? Kind of, yeah, pl playing like my lyre, but deadening the string so it's not actually like plucking. But, uh, yeah, kind of just like checking out Neuralis' sword, really, and just trying to pay attention. Writing a new tune about Derek. Yeah, exactly. Lost love, you know. <laughs> Wait, I remember Victoria said she was back. I'm back. Okay. Why does this take five years to load?
Oh, rip. That's probably why. No. Um, give me a constitution saving throw. Gravy. Yeah. <clears throat> Sixteen. Gravy, you're sitting there, um, kind of strumming your loot when you feel like a, a massive thud across the back of your head. And you uh, fall off your stool under the ground, only to see up the corner of your eye Giancarlo running down the road. Oh, oh no, you fucking don't. <laughs> Wisdom save. What do you do? Wait, make the, this Fuck, wait, hold on. In my time of knowing him, we had that short this combat. the fastest you've ever fucking seen him moving as no, well. No, of course, of and course. And the only but... reason you can tell it's him is because you can see his bright white fucking socks, like, hot-footing it down the... Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. I just want to know something like obviously there's adventurers and there's commoners right and like a butler could definitely be a commoner so based on that one combat we had with him like you know I know meta wise is like does he have like I'm trying to say like does he have one HP or does he have like 10 HP is trying is what I'm trying, you're to, trying like. to see if you're gonna kill him you have no idea I have no idea. I was in combat with him. I've met this guy. Like, I've hit him. <laughs> he passed out from, like, one hit. Like, I can't tell anything. I he know this guy out. for at least a week. He passed out from the pain. But he hasn't demonstrated any type of defense or fighting or anything towards you. But the mayor indicated that there was something about him, right? That you didn't understand when you very first met him. He has not hit you. He has not defended himself in combat. He hasn't done anything other than get hit and cry. Uh, so I show. It is literally, as, you have no idea at this point. Yeah. Like, as a free action, I show. Wake up! And I'm going to close the gap. And I'm going to try to tackle him. I'm trying to grapple him. I have plus you zero to athletics. <laughs> you move substantially faster than he does, though. So roll athletics. I'm going to roll his as well. Fast to I get up. Oh, fucking God. I, I want him so bad. Okay, ready? A 12. You see? <laughs> Just as you reach him, you kind of like lunge forward to grab a hold of him, and he, his uh, silky socks kind of slide out of your grasp, <laughs> and you yeah, fall under the ground. <laughs> oh! <laughs> he runs into the forest. Uh, I say to him, "I, I'm going to kill you." <laughs> You mean How you say to everyone, I'm going to kill you! How far is he from me now? Maybe 15 feet. So, so, okay. So when he moves away, do I get an opportunity attack? Yeah, go ahead. Can I grapple him again? No, it would have to be something uh, ranged. I'm just making that up. Hit him with a rock. I either Shoot hit him. him again. Yeah, fuck it. I'm just gonna hamstring him. He took four damage last Jesus. time. It's just like, yeah, that's what I'm thinking, G. I either do 20 psychic <laughs> or I do right. four <laughs> crossbow. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I just want to ham I want to hamstring him. So 16 to 16 hits 
four damage. I do have dark vision, so I'm not like you sever his. You sever his breeches, bringing him down like a young calf. The <laughs> oh. Not again! <laughs> I don't know why out. I have such an irrational hatred for this NPC. Dude. When you guys get to oh. him, you can see just as Jean is noticing that Giancarlo has the amulet in his hands. <gasps> <gasps> oh, you scoundrel! Yeah, yeah. I, I step on his like upper back, like total bad police man right now. I reproduce the rope and hog tie him. Oh my god, I hate this guy so much. <laughs> He's like squirming, muttering about heathen scum. I push my thumb into his wound. You, sir, are the one who's been caught in the act of theft. Screaming and yelling. It is you who steals that cursed sword. You're going to kill us all. <laughs> Kel's trying to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, shut up, yeah. there. Uh I pull out said heathen sword. I I flip him over by the hip, like I kick him over, and I hold it to his neck and I say, You have John Carlo, the only reason you're not dead is because of Harry and Jean, okay? All right, we saved you in that battle. We clearly have some well intentioned because we would like to help your townsfolk. But if I'm being completely honest, after learning you're from the university and the mayor, it, may, it makes sense to me that the mayor didn't want us to know where his daughter is just because... Nobody should know if you're the most trustworthy. But you're a little Harry Potter ass room. <laughs> and your attempt to steal from us is putting me at my limit. I ate my parents and <laughs> and I I think that I, I'm more upset right now. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say it like him. His eyes get huge, like, you're going to eat him? Yes, I'm going to eat you. Harry doesn't correct him. <laughs> if you don't tell me at least something useful in the next 60 seconds that Gene, Harry, and I don't already know, I will put you up like a Hawaiian luau. All these places you haven't been to, but I've heard of them in books. It's true. I've heard of them as well. I'll tell you something, he says. Oh, I'll tell please. something that none of you probably know. <laughs> the mayor knows everything. And you're really going to regret hurting me. Now untie me this very moment. I'm sorry, I think he said something we don't know. Yeah, we... <laughs> We knew the mayor knew more than he let on. Come on. Come on, John Carlo. Then what does it matter if I sleep in a small room? Or that I work at the university? You Why know what? is it such a big deal? You know what? You're right. <laughs> that was very classist of me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually like... <laughs> He no, kind of just me. me. And, he's like, check your privilege. I, I will, okay? <laughs> I will, John Carlo. So, John Carlo. Just a student. Okay. I'm on a small budget. <laughs> I have to work for my, my meals. And now you're hog tying me in the middle of the night, shooting me twice in one day. What's the you just steal from that? us and try yeah. and beat Gravy over the head based on the lump on the back of his skull. Well, oh no, you were is it visible? Me prisoner talking about eating me. Well, that was after the. <laughs> I just broke that theft. up. Yeah. Come on. I'm I told you something. How would you react if somebody held you hostage, kidnapped you on the side of the road? Hey, hey, I told Use you I had to eat my... against you. <laughs> I had to eat my parents. Come on, just reveal something emotion sentimental about yourself, John Carlo. 
I'm but a mere scholar. And, and a thief. Was lying. That wasn't yours to begin with. And it neither was yours either. It was gifted to us. You're making a Walking lot of assumptions, a John Carlo. A stolen necklace and a stolen sword. Okay, and you okay. haven't? Persecuting me because I'm a student and I work for <laughs> room and board and I sleep in an empty, cold room alone every night, studying all day, <laughs> serving. We've all been there. Listen, that doesn't man. give you the excuse to steal, and you have been acting very suspicious. I'm sorry you're 21, okay? I'm sorry. I he's get actually it. Like, he's like, clearly, he's like, <laughs> he's like starting to bald. <laughs> he's like in his <laughs> early 50s. <laughs> oh, fuck, he's, okay. like, uh, he's like Chris Elliott in like Scream, with yeah. like the fucked up like hands. Like, okay. He's just, he's just a sad <laughs> servant. That you're I, <laughs> shooting for target practice. I, 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 I tear the amulet from his hands and I hand it back to Gene. Here's the luminary amulet of Sehanin Moonbow, Gene. <laughs> and I, I pull the blade back so it's not like poking, you know. Like I think I've at least drawn like a bead of blood. And I trust Harry to make a better shot than me. So I put the sword away and I say, listen. You slipped up. You said where the daughter... Oh, man, I know his name, too. Where the Lord's daughter and his son-in-law were staying. Oki Ballantyne. Oki and... Delphine. Delphine, okay. We defended your town. I know you're from the capital, but you need to tell us why the mayor would allow an abyssal infiltration and only escort his daughter and son-in-law out of town right after You're... their wedding. You really need me to explain that to you? If your I... daughter's wedding I... was infiltrated by demon beasts, you wouldn't try to get her to safety after months of fires and mysterious deaths you wouldn't try to get her out if she was that important to you and you had the means i would but That's... i wouldn't send a little bitch like you to protect her <laughs> harry harry comes up and i like harry cast and, like, charm person in the dirt. And i'm gonna cast charm person <laughs> nice <laughs> and i'm gonna get on his level and look him in the eye mustached man to butler <laughs> and i'm gonna ask him it's like Giancarlo, I think we have gotten everything confused at this point, and I will agree the shooting was rather excessive, and we just want to get everything straight so we can get this whole matter resolved. <laughs> and he needs to make a wisdom saving throw. He's very partial to a mustache. <laughs> Harry twirls it charismatically. Oh my god. Giancarlo's like eyes turn into spirals and he's just like fucking twirling on the inside with your mustache before just him. Follow the strokes of my mustache. Everything's going to be okay. We'll get this talked out and resolved and everything will be okay. Now tell us what happened. On your uh, side of the story. He rolled an eight. Let me check. Haha, -ha, he needed a nine. Oh my god. He is You're charmed. completely under your, your power at this point. I ask him politely to tell us his side of the whole story. At what point should I begin? <laughs> How about you tell us about when Oki came to town? Everyone was suspicious of Oki when he came to town. They're always suspicious of outsiders, just as they were suspicious of me and continue to be. Oki came in. Typical city folk. 
Oki works for the government. It must have been very hard for you having to deal with all the uh, suspicion. Yes. And my precious Delphine Ew. treats me Ew. like insect while she welcomed him into our Lord's manor. Dun, dun, dun. How long have you liked Delphine? Since arriving here, we sometimes run into one another in the library. She's quite a pleasant girl. Whenever I sure. serve her breakfast, she always manages to say thank you, and her eyes twinkle in just such a way that it keeps me warm in that oh. very small room at night. It's <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I'm sure it must have been hard seeing someone you love fall for another. I can't imagine what that would feel like. It hurts, but I'm used to it. I can't Ouch. imagine her spending the rest of her life. Such a twit. But some of us aren't free to marry regardless. Are you tied to your work, or do you have someone else that you're in betrothed to? Those of the order are not allowed to marry. I will never what, marry. What order is order. that? I I can't recall. What? Take your time. No rush. I know you've had a very long night tonight. What was the question? Hmm. Uh just when he says that to Harry, could I determine his truthfulness? Like, I want to see if he's, like, tongue-tied or if he, like, if he's mentally blocked. Yeah. Like, by something or if he's actually yeah. just being like, uh, like, I, you know, I can be waterboarded and won't say I'm from the CIA type of thing. No, oh, jeez. No waterboarding. Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's a nat one. So, yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. He's an idiot. So were you taking them to safety in the city? After all the events of the wedding? Yes, I volunteered to do so. When my it lord realized that it was a targeted attack, I volunteered to take them. Was someone targeting the two? We could only assume so. What there were no targets that? anywhere else in the village that evening. There had been no attacks for nigh on a week. They had never stepped so close to the village. And to interrupt Delphine's wedding. There were so many. We just assumed that it was a targeted attack, having been the mayor's daughter. But she is safe now. Is she at the city? At the university? Yes. What happened to the church? The church was burned in the middle of the night. Was it foul play? We believe that everything around lately has been foul play. But we believe that whoever set fire to the church was looking for something. Mm. Could be the priests believe that as well. The mayor and I have been searching for cure for the priest. Without mm. it, we are almost powerless to defend the village. That must be hard. And Harry leans back. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, ask him what he knows of the amulet and the sword. Mm-hmm. That is the amulet of Selenine Mumbo. 
a great religious relic. Capable of incredible healing powers. Lost for centuries, believed to be protected by the elves. I can imagine that was distressing, seeing it up for all of a sudden. In the hands of you bozos. <laughs> well, I guess we know how he really feels. Did you find out anything in the city that could help the town? Only where there may be the location of a religious relic, but it seems you got to it before I did. Do you know where the demons might be coming from? We have yet to track that down, but we believe that it's coming from the forest. Part mm. of my research in being here is to find where the evil is coming. Hmm. When it is coming. Seeing the sword of Neralis carried and used, it's just a reminder of the stakes. Hmm. What if I promise you we'll do our best to make sure everything's fine and that Delphine stays safe? Would you help us? Anything you know could help save Delphine? The greatest chance of Delphine's safety is remaining where she is, with no one finding her, except those prepared to defend her. John Carlo. What if we told you we were prepared to defend her? You're also still carrying the sword of Neralis. Don Carlo, Neralis reached out to us to quell this supposed abyssal threat. We're trying to get to the bottom of these demonic uprisings. Our friend's actually a paladin of Neralis now? That kind of quiets him, giving him a good think, because he didn't realize that. And now he's looking, like, slowly from you to Gravy's sword, being like, Neralis would never visit you. Not gravy. No one has heard from Neralis thousands of years. Our friend Gil. He found Neralis' tomb. The Greenling. Let's be polite. There's no need to be rude. I do not believe it. What sort of reason to reach out to Neralis for thousands of years? How do you think we got the sword and the amulet? I fear you must have found the tomb and robbed him. Oh. <clears throat> well, <laughs> what's <laughs> what's so important about Delphine that she was targeted? Just that she's the mayor's only daughter. Only surviving relative. The but mayor is an easy target. Hard felt the mayor of enemies. <laughs> yeah, actually, that's a great question, June. Uh, what's the political value of our, like, of your specific town? Like, why not attack the capital? Let's say, unless the attacks are coming from the capital. Because this is the historical Elven seat power. Hmm. Hmm. The Elves have defended against the evil thousands of years. Anything that could possibly stop them would arise from here. How long has it been since we started questioning a Under Charm person? About 45 minutes. We're running out of time, guys. Any other questions we might want to prioritize? Don Carlo. 
what do you want for yourself? I want my gloves back. <laughs> oh, no. We don't have them, right? I think we're all still wearing them from when we were... They're like, all wearing them yeah. in the fucking face. <laughs> <laughs> like, tying him up okay, with okay, them Okay, on, okay, like... okay, okay. I take off my pair of gloves. And... I, I don't know. If he's not wearing any gloves... I... I untie him. And I put the gloves on him before the spell breaks he starts like whimpering kind of like sobbing to himself i mean you saw this guy's room he has like zero fucking possessions he had five <laughs> pairs of white gloves and you stole every single one of them Harry gives him back his gloves and just kind of ha- like awkwardly hugs like there there it'll be okay <laughs> i look at gene and i'm like separates me <laughs> from the heathens I, I look at Gene and I'm like, don't give him your gloves. Remember, there's still like an abyssal plague. <laughs> like he two is enough. Like yeah, you can have half. That, those gloves saved us from fear. getting abyssally poisoned. So. Ah, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, the spell breaks. Yeah. Uh, he starts like shifting and like fighting against his constraints. What have you done to me? Oh my God! Really. He knows that he's been charmed. He knows that you got information from him. And he also knows what's, you know, what he has to look forward to, having spilled all of his secrets. You know what, Giancarlo? The least you can do is untie me now. You know everything. I'm in the process of it, okay? Giancarlo, I'm sorry for treating you so poorly. You and I both have extremely sad stories and and somehow I think your story is sadder than mine. Oh my god. <laughs> but I'm dead serious, Giancarlo. Magic incantation or not, if you're trying to get to the bottom of an abyssal uprising, then we're on your side. And so is Harry and so is Jean. You might not need our help. But the reason why we travel in a party is because we're not stupid enough to do it alone. Are you really going to run all the way back to Heartfelt in the middle of the night during an abyssal uprising? Let us take you back in the morning. Let us bring you back to Mayor Shoth safely. You the may not have that screeching? much time. But the amulet, I would have been just fine. Well, you don't have the amulet. You only have us. <laughs> and if you trust us, then you'll have the amulet by association. <laughs> so he stands up and he's like brushing the dirt off of himself and like trying to like pick it slowly out of his, his wound. Like he can't stand on both legs. He's like, I, I would ask that I get some healing. I'm in an extreme amount of pain here. I've just betrayed myself. I will fully take the crossbow bolt out and I will look at him and I say no we will not heal you because you will rest with us tonight and tend to your wounds and in the morning you will sit in our caravan and you will be driven back but you need to suffer the pain of your consequences for right now (sighs) and also really cool scar maybe you'll actually find a woman (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> or a partner that is suitable to your Now he's choices. probably got like a fucking limp and a bum shoulder for the rest of his life just because you wanted to use him as a dummy. You wanted yeah. to extract things from him. All from my day. fault. And someday day. I will suffer the same consequences. But today is not the day, Giancarlo. Come and back to the barn you're requiring house. requiring him to suffer. <laughs> yeah, fuck him, bro. <laughs> no shit. Gravy's got He's... a serious god complex here. All right, so back at the, you guys return back to the cabins, right? With Giancarlo. With Giancarlo, okay. With Giancarlo. When you get there, Rita's awake and Cherry's awake, but Gel is not. And uh, 
Cherry like holds her hands up like, what the fuck? We had a discussion. And it's resolved now? Yes, it's too dangerous for John Carlo to go running off in the night, so he's agreed to stay with us until morning. Being the sensible man he is. And she shakes her head and goes back in and goes to sleep. And uh, Rita comes and gets John Carlo to sit up on the table and dresses his wound. And then goes back to sleep herself. John Carlo curls up on the ground in the back corner nearest Cherry. Is the poor man just clutching his gloves in his sleep? Yes. They're like wadded up in a bloody ball in his hands. Oh, (laughs) jeez. Hey, uh, none of us have uh, precipitation, right? I don't. I look at Jean. No, uh, but I can, okay. I can, uh, unseen servant and tell him to clean it. <laughs> you know what? I will take his gloves, and I will spend a better part of the night working out as much filth as possible. Personally, without the unseen servant, but I don't tell John Carlo that. And I, when he w- wakes up, he should just have his fresh gloves next to him. You're like washing them on your like fucking skinny bar abs in the in a stream. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping there's like a basin, but yeah, sure. <laughs> They're just like laying there, like pantsless. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm Winnie the Pooh. Or what? It's totally like, Winnie the Pooh right it now. With the birds. Yeah. All right, is everybody else going back to sleep then? Yep. All right, so you finish up your rest. It is morning, and you hear Rita outside <laughs> clanging and around Carlo's with gone. pots and pans. <laughs> and uh, everyone has a long rest except for Gel and Gravy. Interesting. Uh, was it because I couldn't fall asleep, or is it because I spent all night cleaning gloves? <laughs> You'll never know. Okay, cool. You did sleep before that, so. Okay, 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 okay. Is Gel dead? Is Gel at now? another point of exhaustion then? No, he's at a half point. Okay, did I suffer a point of exhaustion? No, wait. What's his uh? What's your points in exhaustion? I was at three, three before, so this would make it at four. Three. The penalty at four is half my life. So you are at four. And then I'm at one? And you are at one. What the it's, it's fuck? It's one per three? night. I think we might want to try the amulet on Gail today. All I know is the amulet's very powerful. And without the right knowledge on how to use it, I don't think it's going to be any help. But what I'm hoping is, if we can get it to the priest, he seemed, according to Giancarlo, the only way to save the village. So hopefully he does know how to use it. That's true. And then we can put all these things back when we're done. And hopefully we'll be good. Rita kind of chipperly... Walking around, preparing breakfast for everyone, like, gather around, gather around. What a peaceful evening it ended up being. <laughs> Cherry kind yeah. of nods, like, still half asleep. Henry is in a good mood, managed to sleep through the night. I, uh, At least one of us did. While Rita's preparing breakfast, I take her aside and say, have a treat, and I give her the rest of the bacon. That she like looks up at you like so excited and like gives you a big hug and then starts to fry it up. Nice. I'll go back and sit down. <laughs> Somebody gonna drag Gail to the table. <laughs> <laughs> Is he even able to get out of his bed? 
<laughs> I can Tomorrow still walk. I'm, I can walk half speed. And um, <laughs> just kind of gimping over there. Yeah, Gravy is not looking so great either. How's Henry looking? Henry looks pretty good. He had a full night's sleep. He didn't. Oh, okay. Good for oh. you. Fucker. Did Gel. <laughs> <laughs> did Gel. Did Gil, uh, really love company, man. Did Gel have nightmares, or was there another. Like, something else that prevented him from sleeping? No, Gel just tossed and turned all night. Like, tortured sleep. No rest. No, that's like... But he didn't dream of the horned go last night. Woo! No one did. Progress. Concern? Maybe we fucked him up worse than we thought. Me. So, uh, Rita goes over and, like, knocks on Sophia's door, and she's like, uh, Sweets, if you haven't had breakfast, I saved you some. We've got bacon. And, uh, Sophia comes out, like, hesitantly, uh, looking at the group, and she spots gravy and, like, <laughs> rolls her eyes. <laughs> Uh, Rita says to her, uh, Sophia, the group here um, was discussing last night that they had some curiosities regarding the customs of our village and any religious texts that we may have may be of use to them. I know that your father collected such things. She kind of glares at Rita. Uh, and Rita's like, and our best bet to help Henry here and to maybe help others is to share any knowledge that we have with them. Sophia kind of softens a little bit at hearing that. And she says, yes, most of his library still exists. It's probably not as large as what you're used to, but you're welcome to peruse through them. Sophia, will you accompany, accompany me to the lake today? Or the river? Oh, I, I couldn't possibly. Why is that? I have to stay with the children. Do they want to come? Could make it a field trip. No, I'm not willing to take the children out of the village when we don't know what's running around here. It's best to keep them safe. Okay. I'm the only thing they have left. I'm the only thing that they trust. Of course. Plus, I don't know you at all. Why would I go anywhere with you? I was looking to get to know you. <laughs> you should blush. <laughs> well, you guys hit up the library. I'm headed to the to the river. The river or the lake? Wherever they get their water from. Okay. So that's to the west. Yep. Um, it's really just like a creek, about six feet wide, maybe a foot or two deep. Just kind of deep enough to wade in in some spots, sitting out in others. Um, based on the sides of the lake, does it look like the water flow has increased? It looks to be of kind of its standard height. There aren't any deep grooves in the mud above it. Okay. And it's not shallow enough to appear to have dried up any. It seems to be flowing at a steady pace. Great. I'll just head back to town then. Okay. And the rest of you? Uh, there is a library to check out? Yes. Okay, right. cool. Yes. Um, so everybody that John Carlo's is, with us, right? <laughs> John Carlo is with you, but he's uh like feeling like shit. So um Gel you're um feeling too poorly to help them in the library. And Giancarlo is feeling too poorly to help them in the library. Sophia's caring for the kids. Rita's taking care of Henry. Um, so that leaves Harry, Cherry, Gravy, and Jean to research, if that's what you want to do. Yes. I, 
will uh, use a bardic on Harry, as I probably won't roll too well here. All right. Uh, I only want to research long enough so we can still get back to Heartfelt before, like, 9 o'clock or something. All right. So it's about 11 in the morning when you return. Yep. And everybody is, like, kind of cleaned up from the events of the night before, helped Rita clean up. And uh, everybody that's doing research, uh, give me an investigation check. For sure. Uh, would you like us to, like, declare our topic or anything? If you're looking for something specific, yes. If you're hoping to stumble upon something, no. The healing necklace. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. I'm going to research the necklace specifically. Harry, you have a D6. keep it general. Oh, what? You have a D6 and you're lucky, by the way. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm going to re-roll with lucky. And Gravy, you might want to research that sword just in case it's what's causing us exhaustion. Not 20, baby. Holy shit. Woo! I rolled a one. I have another lucky. <laughs> Can I use more on one? Yes. All right, all right. One more try. Acceptable. Yes, please. Thank you. And Holy what shit. Was, what was a... a uh, you got a d6 on top. Nice. Wow. And gravy? Um, sorry, investigation, right? Yep. Yes. Uh, what, you gotta tell me what you're doing first. What? No, for sure. I just wanted to make sure. Uh, so I have disadvantage. I'm gonna look into the sort of neuralis to see if it's causing exhaustion. Uh, okay. I'm gonna use my class feature to get rid of your disadvantage. Thanks, man. Mm -hmm. 17. Okay, cool. Maybe. Wow. It's worked out right. okay. So the texts that you find are kind of tattered and old and written in not a standard ink, but what appears to be like a root dye. The books are filled with kind of pressed um herbs and little notes and kind of drawings and there are names written in the fronts of the books um, that appear to be generational they're incredibly old and full of the elven histories of the area you see maps that are not labeled but are the same geographic shapes as the maps that you've seen of milford and silver cave and leafly village the lake you recognize and you see pictures of dogs uh, at the very top northeast section of the forest, um, right where the modern school would be that Harry is from. Uh, Jean, you in researching the amulet come across a text with pictures of different uh, religious rel relics and you come across pages of Sahanin Mumbo and a description of the amulet perfectly describes the uh, text in Elven. Who speaks Elven? Harry I does. speak it. Nope. So, Jean, you um, you recognize the drawing of Amulet and um, get Harry to come in and interpret for you. The Amulet is just as described. It was owned by Neuralis. It was a gift given to him uh, by a Sahanin Moonbow to help him pass from the different realms through the realms of the undead and be able to grant the occasional wish of a very special elf every few generations to save mm. someone important to them. And while its power is strong and capable of more than that, those were the restrictions that were placed on him in using it. It created a lot of frustration within him that he couldn't save and help more people carrying the burden of that power and that intense uh, magic. But it does cure disease, including the abyssal plague. Oh, son. Pipe. Harry. 
you are scanning through the books looking for something else of import and you come across a text discussing how the people of the area um, describe an ancient elven language the supposed death of Neralis when uh, he came in contest with let me find the name He's described as the watcher of souls, neither malicious nor apathetic towards his charges, living or dead. He was a servant of Sahanin Moonbow, often working with Lobelis Inareth, the elven god of longevity. And allied with Ilmater and Kelimvor, fairy gods of perseverance and death. The and sworn Lord. enemies of Loviatar and Null, fairy gods of pain and the draconic god of death. Hmm. This was the home of Neralis in the forest to the north and the west. His holy days were during the new moon, where his clergy would wear white cowls and gray white robes. This is just as Rita described um, the kind of procession that they wore those clothes to the cave and back. His primary worshipers were those of adventurers. They would pray to him to give them, give him their respects in the hopes that he would pat, he would let death pass them by. He was linked to someone named Quellith, who was a delusional worshiper who believed that the god wanted her at his side and that the amulet was rightly bequeathed to her. So the elves buried him in a tomb underwater and erected the channel lock system guarded by the Temple of Mushrooms. As Quellith was afraid of spiders water as she could not swim and allergic to mushrooms Neralis was given the sword having fallen on it Killing himself. Causing the people to erect the tomb in the first place. The Rallis fell on his sword and kill himself. Correct. That sounds cursed if I ever heard it. inform the party of all this and gravy yeah yes what were you researching the sort forgot. of neuralis plus four uh oh. and also if it specifically is causing our uh, exhaustion. So 
you find a drawing of the Sword of Neralis, one of the most infamous elven weapons uh, in the lore books as interpreted. You don't speak elven, right? No. As I'll interpreted by please. Harry. It take, for some reason, you're, um, the links you set up, G, for their character sheets. Yeah, you gotta copy and paste it. It can't. Okay, it won't load gravies, it. but it, oh, it here, finally loaded Harry's. Here, here, let me. I'll, I'll fix it. Anyways, as interpreted by Harry, the Sword of Neuralis is a curse weapon, having been buried beneath the caves, um, destroyed by Neuralis himself, supposedly. Um, it was given to him by the Draconic Gods of Death. Alright, Gravy's link should be working now. So the Sword of Neuralis was uh, reputably given to Neuralis by an abyssal god. This is rumor, so there is no specific information there. Given to Neuralis by an abyssal god to help him be able to travel back and forth and defend himself so that those of the uh, abyssal realm would not attempt to harm him and is a cursed blade. If it is used to harm any elf, it will grant exhaustion. If it is utilized in any form, it will grant exhaustion. If it is carried mm. at any point in the day, it grants exhaustion. Draining uh. the life force of the bearer Hopefully, pulling them back into the realm of the dead. I see. It makes sense if Neuralis could handle some of that. Yes. Cool. We should take so that away. That's the information that it. you find. So would well, we would we assume from that that um, if we don't carry it during the day, that we would be okay? Like if we're not if we're if we're having it on us, it'll grant exhaustion. But if, if it we're is not in your possession, it's going to grant you exhaustion. If you pick it up and use it, it's going to grant you exhaustion. Obviously, if you use it against an elf, it's going to grant you exhaustion. But it doesn't say the amount of exhaustion it grants for each of those things. Interesting. My bird is we oh, put it back. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Put it back. Or, well, uh, that's funny. All the of all the things he chose is like super shit. <laughs> yeah, you, you had a one in three chance, and you had like the death defying weapon. Yep. Cast it into the fire. <laughs> I mean, for all we know, all the items were cursed. That's true. Yeah, true. Yeah, especially with that god, he seems a little. Mm -hmm. Sorry to speak ill of your god. <laughs> Above the table, they weren't picked the only one that was <laughs> oh my god nailed it nailed it <laughs> and yet you. you've been warned so many times since then and you just keep carrying it yeah when were we everybody warned? he warned you and then john carlo told you multiple times yeah who gives a fuck about john carlo <laughs> john carlo was sort of raving at that point well, now we have to go back to uh, Slippery and Hardfelt, so we could get that's a, good. We could bury the sword with the body if we wanted, because I don't know if that statue's going to pick it back up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Put it with the body. 
We could put a wooden rail, let's see it. I think we need to do something with it. <laughs> we need to get, um, one to get thing it that I didn't that I didn't tell you <clears throat> is that what you found out about um them erecting the gates in the burial place of Norellis was that they separated uh, the cave um, that he was born in into two and they left it so that the rumor stood that the people marched uh, paraded to the place where the tree was planted um, and erected a statue for him there so that the people could pay their respects and yet never made it public that the other end of the cave was guarded as a temple to him to prevent Quillith and anybody you know with ill intent from disturbing his place of rest glad we put up that put that water back because yeah bitch could have gotten in there Quillith must have to pay <laughs> Uh, make sure we say thank you to Sophia for letting us use your dad's stuff. Thank yeah. you, Sophia. <laughs> um, can I go to Rita real quick? Sure. Uh, I just give Rita a note. And it's addressed to... Sophia. Um... Just a drawing of your dick. <laughs> yeah, thanks for it, making me a okay. sexual predator. Yeah. yeah ancient thank you. dick pick. FBI, yeah, open up. <laughs> the ancient dick pick. That's yeah. hilarious. Uh, I would hope that uh, this table is anti pedophile, but okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want to take her to the lake, Jean. Why? What's wrong with that? You were going to drown her, weren't you? <laughs> Fuck. Why are we killing children? Stop you know it. I wanted to take her and be like, is this normal? And then leave. Hey. Okay, so I didn't see that you put this here. Note from Gravy. It's just a note. It's essentially like when we leave, I just tell Rita like, hey, give this to Sophia when we leave. And if she interprets it as Jean or Gravy, I don't really care, you know? Just like she is a kid who lost her parents. So. I can't help it. It's so sweet that I just imagined you like typing like slash burp at the end. <laughs> like, yeah, I, just, I ate my it. parents. Yeah. Burp. I know it's hard to lose your parents, but at least you didn't have to eat them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it definitely and suffered a literal heartburn for years. Yeah, comparing my loss to her. Yours was a tragedy, but mine was worse. Mine was delicious. <laughs> mine was delicious. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So Rita knows to give this to Sophia, and um, should I interpret that as you guys are ready to leave then? Yes, uh, Gravy's ready to leave. Um, yeah, we should probably go. I try, I'll probably go help Gail and John Carlo load up to the caravan, even though he's pretty tired himself. Cherry's been kind of babysitting Gail and John Carlo and the rest of the group to make sure that everyone's protected while you guys are researching. Nice. Uh, so she helps load everybody into the wagon. Reed comes out. Gives Harry and Gravy and Jean a hug. Waves to the rest of the group. I hope to see more of you soon. I'm sure that we could all use some hope. We've got a long way to go. And I hope you won't be strangers. We'll be sure to say hello when we pass by again. Thanks for everything, Rita. She just stands there and waves. Uh, are, is everybody leaving then? Yep. Yep. All right. And where are you heading? Uh, 
heart filled. I think Jean made a good point. Do we oh. go to Milpri and drop it at the cave? I think get rid of it as soon as possible. And... Because if we, because it, at least if we leave it with his actual corpse, then yeah, we could definitely be like, haha, idiot, you picked up a curse blade to the next person. <laughs> you guys right now are kind of um, equidistant from both caves, so which cave uh, are you I see. I think it would be best, uh, guys, if we just made like a straight, like you could probably see this, like straight so shot. So you don't have to double back? Yeah, because either way they're both connected to Neuralis, but we should probably give the sword back and then go to Heartfelt with that makes sense to me. Yep. With um, Giancarlo, and then maybe Giancarlo can check out the cave if he's such a scholarly researcher guy. Plus, we can check out the uh, right. water flow in Silver and see if it's different. Mm. About two hours, two, three hours, and you guys roll up on uh, Silver Cave. And who's going in? Who's not? Uh, I would see if uh, Ir 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 is his character. What's his fucking name? Gail. <laughs> yeah, Gail. Gail, uh, you trying to go see your 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 daddy? Yeah, yeah. He's yeah, probably your daddy too now. Uh, We're brothers. Yeah. What was the? Uh... Uh, I, I think I cry. <laughs> I, ask I Harry, think I cry a little bit. <laughs> I ask Harry what the prayer was that adventurers give to Neuralis, uh in specifics, and then... Do I? Yeah. Did I read that, the specific prayer? It didn't say. Okay. It just said that they Give us, Lord, our daily bread. <laughs> so... <laughs> I told Gel to at least ask everybody Neuralis to have death pass. Everybody roll religion. Yikes. Do I get advantage so that it'll be at least a normal roll since it's my god now? I don't yes. know. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 16. 17. Ooh. Religion. Binda be kinging. Did you roll persuasion, Harry? Did I roll persuasion? Yeah. <laughs> but you got a Cut. 14. So I, I would just, just do your modifier. Just subtract to the, one yeah. from that. Yeah. 16. I'm tired. <laughs> They're also right next to each other. I was waiting for Gravy to roll. roll Jeez, first. what a dummy. Oh, I rolled right. a 7, sorry. Gal, uh, lead us... Lead us in prayer when we uh, approach the statue. You guys enter the cave, and um, as soon as you approach, you can see that prior to when you were there before, the water is slightly higher than it was. The lip of the edge is about a six inch um, difference between the edge and the water. And now it's probably about two inches. It's almost kind of rippling over the top. The base of the tree, you can see the well-stained uh, waterline on its bark has raised a couple of inches as well. All right. Um, so, um, I don't know what the prayer would have been, but let's. I'm going to wing it. Um, <laughs> dear, dear uh, oh, Noralis, uh, God of... Uh, what was he? The god of um, not the elves, but the god of uh, the god of like death, like neutral, like neutral death. Yeah, was it god adventurer, of death? adventurers and like death? Yeah, like yeah. adventure, god safe of, travel. Yeah, of safe travel and adventure, and um, we humbly come before you to uh, um, as uh, your. I as your servant and these as uh, my servants um, hey. come for you. <laughs> hey, fuck you, buddy. <laughs> With all due respect and loyalty, and um, and uh, we we bring to you and return to you what is uh, yours. Um, 
and I lay the uh, sword down at the statue's feet. Um, in Naraus' name, amen. You really and uh, when you, that. when you um, kind of approach, you notice that he has a um, shield in one hand, and um, nothing in the other hand. And after your prayer, he has a stone sword in one hand and a shield in the other, and the sword of Neralis is gone. I'm sorry, Good. he has a what? A shield in one hand and what in the other? Nothing in the other, right? He started with nothing in the other, but after your prayer, he now suddenly has a stone sword in his hand. Okay, cool. And you guys so, do not have the sword of Neralis any longer. Right. Hooray! You. So basically, we ended up offering something to the other thing. <laughs> uh, what yeah, we, we gave some to the evil guys, but... <laughs> Wait, no, maybe it was good we didn't give the evil guy the god-killing sword. Right, he could have maybe, you know, used it and not had consequence, especially if they're already dead. Um. <clears throat> True. Yeah, I mean, if Neralis wielded it for so long and it killed him, I think, we, yeah, it's a good point. But we still don't know what we ended up giving them. He fell away violently, him. though, supposedly. Yeah. We don't really know. Oops, accidentally killed myself. Been there. So you guys, um... You guys no longer have the Sword of Neralis. Right. You guys have kind of made a first testament of prayer and devotion to your paladin's new god and confirmed that the water has in fact risen in this cave um, and that the two... Oh. You were already confirmed that the caves were connected. Yes, and yes. And you saw the uh, maps, and you have confirmed that the other end of the water um, does come up here. Oh, well, that's nice. So, I have a water flask on me. I'm just going to fill it real quick. Okay. Did we have a barrel in the cart or anything else? Did we? Nope. There's no barrel, barrel or anything in that cart. Okay. No. Yeah, the village um, stole everything. But you do have wounded John Carlo. Oh, I'm going to hobble out of the cart and lower himself. Into Stop the water. him! <laughs> Jesus Christ! Shoot him again! <laughs> you think you see as John Carlo lowers himself into the water, his skin glow a little bit. His ears seem to appear a little sharper than normal. Is John? I'm sorry. Is John Carlo an elf already? Do, yes. do we know that? Okay. Yes. Because he was that outsider, right? That's why. Well, yes. Sure. But he's like super elven in okay. appearance. The first one you met, yeah. sharp pointed ears and. Okay. Life, body, and uh, after soaking in the water for ten minutes or so, he seems to feel a little bit better. His wounds are still there. But they seem to have closed. And uh, he hobbles back to the cart. Well, let us be on our way, heathens. I'm going to go uh, <laughs> take some water and just kind of wash it across my face. And uh, okay. try to soak in the divine. After you soak in the divine, your skin uh, appears to illuminate a little bit. Gravy, you want to take a dip? Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I need to. I need this god, godly sperm on me. Godly <laughs> blessing. Yeah. All right. Cherry says, "Well, we should be getting back." On what? It's Evo. about four o'clock in the afternoon at this point. I hope y'all didn't leave Gale because he's much slower than the rest of you guys. <laughs> I just assume you're in the car. Uh, no. I have... <laughs> I, I'm at the back of the group watching. I've been keeping a pretty close eye on you. <laughs> you guys roll into Heartfelt. That's where we'll leave it. 
Ooh. Oh, We're back. We did wow. it. Wow. The emotional turmoil you put me through. Hopefully you? You're here to save you. Not dead. Or poor fucking gal and John Carlo. <laughs> John Carlo was shot twice. <laughs> twice. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, uh, he's a thief, uh, you know. Talk about being on the road at the wrong fucking moment. <laughs> yeah, just kneecap him twice. Both knees. Well, you got an elbow and in one knee, so are you gonna shoot the other knee now? <laughs> yeah, I have so, to. So, just to recap a little, because I will forget, hopefully someone else remembers, you discovered that Giancarlo was asked to take... Uh, the daughter and son-in-law to the city the night of the wedding. He was able to make it back um, the same the next day by the time you guys came to visit. And that he works for the College of Neuralis. He's readily mm -hmm. admitted to that. And that he has the room beside the library so that he has time to research and that he has to work for his room and board and that he is part of an order that he cannot or would not say even when charmed mm -hmm. that cherry was very unhappy even though she has no liking for john carlo that your reaction was to shoot him when he didn't Twice. answer your questions um, that you managed to figure out what the channel lock system and the water's purpose was in the cave. That the amulet was, in fact, a healing amulet. And that that is the place of Neuralis's birth and death. It's like Jesus. Well, place of yeah. resting. And that the sword was cursed and has been returned to Neuralis, hopefully, and that you were able to get a restful night's sleep without the horned goat torturing everyone, but that your exhaustion was from the sword. Nice. And Sophia's father was a collector of ancient elven knowledge, which is why the entire area is so important, even though it is rural and small. And Wyoki was sent there to investigate what's going on by the college. Mm. And why the Lord of such a small town, Heartfelt, would be targeted and be so concerned. And now you are all returning, hopefully, with the cure for the Abyssal Plague. And armed with the knowledge that there's more going on in the area than you thought, and no longer cursed. Okay. Did I miss anything? No, that was pretty good. Sounds about right. I just wanted Sounds to say to that uh, Gravy shot John Carlo twice. Yep, yep. <laughs> Why do oh, you yeah, sound that's... like you're huffing balloons again? Because he is. Delicious balloons. You don't know what he doesn't. He does sound like that, and like a few minutes ago, he sounded like it, and I was like, "Why does he sound like that all of a sudden?" But now he still does. So. Is it? It's weird. It. Doing whippets in the office. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'll see you guys next week. Whippet good. Bye. See y'all. Bye. 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 Bye.